Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with the Economic Ninja. Hey. And I'm gonna get his thoughts on a few quotes. I took some notes. I carry this book uh, with me most everywhere I go. I got it in church one time. It's called Better Decisions, Fewer Regrets. And I got numbers on businesses that I, that I write in here and any kind of thing that I learn wherever I'm at, I try to write it down. I was gonna get your thoughts on it. I, my thoughts are when I heard these, what he wrote in this, I want this notebook because <laughs> I can make a hundred videos. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so. not even joking. Oh, and I remember you're moving the camera. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry. So <clears throat> I got a bunch of them. I'll just start with the risk taker. And it's only about 2% of the population that's actually capable of taking a risk. Yeah, and that doesn't mean that they're even successful right now. A lot of risk takers, most risk takers are successful, but there's a lot of them that aren't, that just, you know, do nine to five jobs right now, blue collar workers, and they are risk takers, but they don't know how to capitalize on that, make money, buy time, enjoy their family more, things like that. And that's what we want to try and pull out of people. Yeah, and, you know, and the definition of, of normal is average. Yep. You know, that's the, and the risk taker is not average. No. And it's, it's a lot of times the uh, average people will laugh and mock. That's what I was about to say. Taker. Exactly. And, and I'm totally used to that. I'm sure you have too. My whole yeah. life, I've been ridiculed, made fun of. Ironically, well after I became a millionaire in my early 20s, I was constantly mocked and ridiculed. Why? Well, first off, they didn't, they didn't have any clue. Every once in a while I would say something like, well, you know, I, I actually do pretty good for myself or I've done well in the past. And nobody asks questions. That's what mockers do. They don't care about knowing things. They don't want knowledge and information. They just want to make themselves look better and feel better than you, which ironically, I'd sit there and just sort of, all right, I guess you just don't get it. Right. <laughs> yeah. But we want to encourage you with this. Right. And uh, I've got wrote down here, and these aren't in any specific order, is if you spend time thinking, you will come up with a good idea. And we do this a lot. We'll find a problem and we'll think about it and we'll talk about it. Think about it. And that's a lot of the reason we're on this trip together with other like-minded people. 100%. So the, really the reason why we're down here in Cancun, not only is it beautiful and we get to write this off against our companies, and the reason why we get to write it off, we get a tax-free uh, legal way of paying less tax is because we flew down here to meet with other like-minded individuals, uh, some which own YouTube channels, some which own massive companies making insane amounts of money and 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 like one man that in particular very young man in his early 20s and he's absolutely crushing it and yeah. it's because he's a risk taker and he's a dreamer and he he puts these things into action so what we do is we come down here we're making videos together and one thing we do is when we're in our hotel rooms or we're in the lobby or the lounge we're talking and giving each other ideas and when you're in proximity to someone usually your biggest sparks of ideas don't happen during a zoom meeting when you have an agenda they happen when you're all joking around you say yeah i wish i could do this i'd be a millionaire and then someone go well wait a minute why don't you do this and like and well because and they go wait let's talk this through and we just come up with these ideas and it just i literally fly home with my next million dollar idea as a matter of fact i was just telling chris uh just what was it like 20 minutes ago in the hotel room we were talking and i go i just figured out my million dollar idea as i was looking through some videos and then talking to him about it and like how it would work and i will literally make a million dollars from that idea this yeah, year and i believe you it's insane uh, and it's good to have friends that believe in you as well. You know, yes. you sh guys, encouragers. I, and get rid of the ones that don't. Get rid of the jealous ones immediately. Do not ever be around them again. I'm dead serious. Oh. Don't, I don't have time for that. Do you know how many people, if I had a dollar for every person that wants to watch me fail and is sitting in the corner, and I mean corner is like a cowardly way, just sitting there waiting like and ready to pounce on you when you fail, I'd be rich. Well, I guess I don't need that. But I mean, but, well, you know what I mean? You've got that too. People that just want to peep their friends, their family, and they're not really friends. No. Y you don't need those people in your life. Get around doers. Get around people that your are family is who wants to be around you, who wants the best for you. Blood means nothing. That's right. Okay, so I've got a lot of stuff wrote down here, but I, I would, just real quick, I want to talk about some of the people that were dreamers, that, uh, that got laughed at and some people not didn't even get to live to see their idea come to fruition. Oh. Alexander Graham Bell mocked, completely laughed at, said he could send your voice through a wire and everybody laughed at it. And then they all used it. Then they all used it. Elias Howe invented the sewing machine. The American women laughed at him. Then they were forced to use it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because it's easier. But it's sad though because he was forced to borrow clothes for an appearance because he was so, so Poor. broke. He didn't, you know, he never got. Um, <clears throat> Robert Fulton invented the steamship. 
and this was interesting, he said when the boat was being built, he would fear only ridicule and mockery. It's all he ever got. And I got it wrote down again, not one single encouraging remark to the man that literally invented something that changed our life, you know? Yeah. It, it's amazing. I think I got one more. Um, oh, this is a good one. Everyone that is put in, uh, put to action behind one of their ideas gets misunderstood. Look at Jesus, the perfect person. Yeah. He was mocked, ridiculed, and laughed at. You know, it's one thing to be mocked and ridiculed. It's a lot to take mocking and ridiculing, right? That's why it's important to be around a couple of people that are encouragers in your life. You know, my mother uh, died way before her time and she was the cheerleader in my life. She is who gave me hope. And her mother before her was also an encourager in my life. I remember um, when I used to want a Ferrari when I was little, I would talk about them, have posters about them. And my grandmother would buy me models of Ferraris and she would literally give them to me. And she says, someday, gosh, uh, you're gonna drive me in your, your Ferrari. You're gonna own it. And it was, the day I bought mine was the day she died. I found out about four hours later. Interesting, amazing. And uh, I actually had to pick it up where she passed away. And I actually pulled up with the car on my trailer and uh, I saw my mother, my grandmother's ashes. But the point of that story is my grandmother was my, um, and my mother were my cheerleaders. And after they left, I still needed a cheerleader. And so I had to go seek out people, and I'm telling you, it was hard to be around that were encouragers and not ridiculers, because you can only take so much mocking in your life. And that's why it's important for you to be active. If you don't have those people in your life, go find them. And I think the easiest way to go find people that are like-minded, go to conferences. Yeah. And, and then you gotta break out of your shell and you gotta go sit with people and say, hey, I don't know anybody here. Would you like to go grab lunch and, and talk to people and share information, phone numbers, emails, everywhere we go around the country, especially at our events, they say the same thing. Oh my gosh, I'm not alone. Oh my gosh, I met people I really think I'm gonna be friends with for life. No matter where they are in the country. And there's never been a better time in, in history with technology to have a friend on the other side. Shoot, you and I are cross country. Yeah, sure. And, and we're able to, and I told you one day, I said, I want to see you so successful that anytime I call and go, dude, I need to get out of the town for a weekend, boom. And we come down somewhere like this, that you got the money to do it. And that's, it's important, yeah. right? Absolutely. <sighs> it, it, and, and it takes courage to do that, it, yeah. to meet somebody get out of your comfort zone and just walk up to them and say, hey, you wanna grab lunch? Yep. You know, and and to trust, it's kind of a trusting factor and it's really, really hard for some people. It's always been a little easier for me. I've kind of been a little more outgoing, but uh, guys, it's really changed my life and I know it will yours too. And I don't know where the next conference might be. You know, uh, I, I, do you know of one? No, I, I have no clue I hate yet. to talk no, about it. There's so many. A... Yeah, we'll let you guys know. But, yeah. but you know, just so you guys know, too, it doesn't always work out. In the beginning, we, we oh, met no people doubt. that were really optimistic, really wanted to come alongside us and help us, and we helped them, and we did. And then it just fell apart, man. I'll tell you what, they went, boom, right off the side of the rails. And I'm, I mean, no joke, just like, and you look back on those conversations like, what happened? What happened? Everything we said ended up coming to pass. And, but they still just went off. And it, what I mean is why I want to say that. And shoot, they may be watching this video right now. Point being is this, it doesn't always work, but out of 10 people that you try and reach out to and you get just one person that's rock solid, it's all that matters. Because when all else fails and ever, well, the whole world's against you and you call up that one person and say, man, they're beating me up. And that other person like Chris goes, yeah, I know what it's like. This is happening to me. And then we go, okay, we're like-minded. We're still going to win, right? Yes, we're going to win. Mm -hmm. Then screw them all. And that's, that's the attitude you've got to have, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, you just can't let, don't let the little things get you down, you know, or you'll be down all the time, you know? Yeah. You, you gotta just keep keep going. And, you know, I failed. Uh, well, I say it was a failure. One of my first businesses, the gym rat, it really is an awesome piece, but it, 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 it opened up so many doors for me. Yeah, it that was not a failure. Life. Because remember, at any time in your life, you can go right back to it. You've yeah. got all the designs, you know how to make it, and it just wasn't that time. Watch, yeah. your channel someday will be so big, and one day you're gonna go, you're gonna be behind that thing, and someone's gonna go, holy cow, that thing's insane. How do I get a hold of those? Well, I could build you 20. I don't, you know, it's just gonna yeah. boom. That idea was never a failure. Because right. you proved it to yourself, then you could do it. Yeah, that was, that's it. Bam. That's what it was for me. Yeah. It was a, uh, um... It opened up so many doors to so many different things that, that are actually in other businesses that are making way more money than that one ever would. 
and uh, it, it's just amazing how it's taking that leap of faith, taking that, taking the ridicule and the laughter, it does not matter, I'm telling you guys. Those people that are gonna do that to you, they're gonna do it anyway. They're gonna do it even when you're successful. Even when you're the richest person, they know they're still gonna be trying to do something to bring their self up. Well, and you're gonna recover all your money from that venture, aren't you? Oh, Once yeah. Oh, dude, oh, yeah, like, yeah, I've already had. So, so you can't even put that in failure category? <laughs> no, well, it's just, it wasn't it didn't what, work you out what you expected. Yeah. You wanted it to be this, and it ended up being this, but now this is gonna turn into this, that, that. That's exactly boom, what boom, happened. Boom, boom, it's gonna explode. It's exactly, yeah. so my worst failure was my biggest success. Amen. It's wild. Amen. So guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hitting the like button. Subscribe if you like this kind of content. Um, we, we do, I know my channel is a lot of prepping and a lot of, you know, getting ready for what's coming, but we also do uh, meetups all over the place. Uh, we don't have anything coming up, but when I, when I do, when we do, I'll, I'll be sure to let you know. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, and guys, don't just prep to survive, prep to thrive. There's only so much stuff you could store away. After a while, you're gonna have to take a little bit of risk and you're gonna have to go crush it. And then I wanna see you crush it more and crush it more and you're going, yeah, you're right. Why was I stuck in prepping? It's time to explode. Yeah. You know, the prepping gives you the peace of mind to go now and take those risks. Well, that's what I told Stacy is, you know, back in 2020, it was, it was really hairy. I mean, that was a really strange time for somebody that can really see like a forward looking perfect person is, it was really eye opening and, I, and it's, it was overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. Especially for the women. And I said, if we don't take advantage of, of the opportunities we have now, yeah. we're going to miss out on life. Amen. You know? Well, look, it changed my life. I started a YouTube channel. Yeah. And I was like, boom. I just like, holy cow, my life's completely different. I mean, I was happy and successful before. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, yeah. this is insane. Just, to, I mean, I'm down in Cancun, running into people that subscribe to the channel and this lady that just ran into me in the hotel and she goes, I'm a prepper. I believe in God. You have changed my life. I've been watching you for four That's months. That's so cool. And I'm like, uh, I, how, how do you like not just know. like lose it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, guys, have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you for being here, and thank you to the Economic Ninja for coming on. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Later.